Hey guys, this is a real life review of the TT Artisan 50mm f1.2 lens. Yes, it's f1.2 and it costs less than $100. So how good can it be? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Miklos Mayer, a photography tour guide in Budapest, Hungary. And in this video review, I'm going to go through the design and the specification of the lens and the image quality. And I will also show you how to use it because at first, it can be quite difficult. Let's address the elephant in the room. This is a fully manual lens. So you have to set the aperture and the focus with your fingers. In other words, there is no autofocus and focusing in itself is a quite, or it can be a quite difficult task. This lens is designed to cover APS-C size sensors and it's available for every mirrorless camera mount out there. In this review, I tested it on a Canon R10. Because there is no electronic connection between the lens and the body, we have to enable release shutter without lens, otherwise the camera will not expose. Then to aid manual focusing, let's go into the AF tab and set manual focus peaking settings to on. So the best way to focus with this lens is how manual focusing should always be, magnifying into the live view and setting the focus on the subject. But doing this handheld, it is not easy at all due to the handshake. You can see that I had some trouble here and some of my shots got out of focus. So it's best to put it on a tripod when focusing is that crucial. This way I ended up with sharp photos all the time. Even if you have focus picking, if you are videoing somebody who is moving fast, it's not easy to keep them in focus. I had quite much trouble here to have her face perfectly sharp. By the way, I have a detailed video about manual focusing. Check it out right here. As always, you can download the full resolution RAW files under the video so you can pixel peep for yourself. Let's have a look on the design and build quality of the lens. First of all, it's all metal. It feels really like a retro lens. I'm sure Fuji users especially will, will love it. It's all metal. And, but it, it also has a metal lens mount. As you can see, it's all metal. And it comes with two types of lens caps. One, it's this, this type of lens cap, it's metal, and the other lens cap, cap is this one, this normal type lens cap. And of course it also comes with a hood, which can be screwed on, like this. But for now I'm going to remove this. So as I told you, this is a fully manual lens, meaning there is absolutely no autofocus. You have to focus with the string. So it's a manual focus only lens. As you can see, it's got focus distance markings in meter and in feet. And also it has depth of field markings for these apertures. So this means that, for example, using F4, the depth of field should be within two meters and five meters. Well, this is just in theory. It's of course best to check. The focus ring is really well dampened and it's a joy to use. And being a fully manual lens also means that you have to change the aperture. So you cannot set the aperture in the camera. You have to change it manually with this ring. So this is now wide open at f1.2 and as I'm stopping down it's f16. As you can see the diaphragm has 10 blades and that is what's making that creamy out of focus background. Let's have a look at the sharpness of the lens. But before I go into that, I have to show you that this lens suffers from a pretty high field curvature, meaning that the depth of field is not 100% perfect. 
parallel to the sensor. So look at this. This is at f1.2, the center is sharp, but this window there is not sharp. Also here, going to the edges of the frame, this is not sharp. On this shot, however, I focused here, you can see that the lens is sharp even quite far at the edges. It's sharp here, it's sharp here, but it's not sharp in the center. You can see the difference here. This window is sharp, but the center is not. It's out of focus. So this is because of this field curvature. You can also see it here on these trees. These trees are definitely blurred, whereas these trees are sharp. They are in focus. How this is possible? The field of focus is not parallel to the sensor. This often happens with very wide aperture lens. And usually this isn't a big problem as long as you know where you want to focus. So if you set your focus exactly on your subject, this isn't going to be a problem. So at f1.2, the center is sharp enough, although it's not as contrasty. And as I go to the edges, as I previously shown you, it gets soft. But if I focus there to the edges, it gets sharp. How to evaluate this? This is not easy. So this is now f2. As you can see, sharpness dramatically improved, although we still have this field curvature and it's much more contrasty going to f2.8 and we still have this field curvature this is still not sharp here but the center is very sharp f4 f5.6 this is f8 and here field curvature already disappeared the whole frame is sharp from edge to edge And this is now f11 and as I see diffraction kicks in above f11 so around f16 it's a bit less soft. So the key thing with this lens is that you really have to nail the focus at your subject. You really have to know which part of your subject you want to be in focus. Let's have a look at flaring. Although the lens comes with a hood, if the sun shines onto the lens element, it produces this greenish diaphragm looking green circle, as you can see. And if I change the aperture, you can see that this, the shape of the diaphragm and the size changes as well. Also, if the sun shines at an angle onto the front element, the contrast significantly drops, as you can see here. The contrast drops quite much at a certain angle. To be honest, I don't think the flaring is that bad. This was a really extreme test. Let's have a look at the chromatic aberrations. This comes out mostly with very contrasty edges like branches against the sky. And as you can see, at very wide open, it produces pretty significant purple fringing chromatic aberrations. If I stop down the lens, it gets a little bit better. And above f4, it disappears almost completely. Of course, we buy these very wide aperture lenses to have a creamy, soft, out of focus background, also called as bokeh. Overall, I really liked how it rendered the out-of-focus parts. The bokeh looks creamy and pleasant to me. So summarizing it, the TT Artisan 50mm f1.2 lens is a great lens for a ridiculously, ridiculously low price. Its build quality is excellent and it's perfect for shots where you want only a small portion to be sharp and to have a creamy background blur in the distance. Don't forget to download the full resolution raw images under the video and there you will also find a link where you can buy this lens. And if you'd like to know why I'm mostly using aperture priority mode when I'm shooting handheld, check this video out. But don't go there just yet, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you over there. Okay.